Some of you have noticed in previous videos that I return the variable self in a lot of my method declarations. So let's take a moment to talk about this. Before I talk about this, let's start by creating a panel class. This is going to be a UI panel, and UI elements, I think, are perfect for explaining this topic. Now, whenever we are declaring our methods, for certain types of methods, it's very easy to figure out what it is that we should return. For something like static get width, the thing that we should be returning is obviously our width. And this is going to be the case for any getter methods, as is suggested by the name. But what we should return actually becomes a little less obvious when we start to work with other types of methods. A good example of this is static set width, in which I would pass in the width variable. And here I would assign my width to the incoming width. And now the question is begged as to what we should return here. Some Cleed code enthusiasts will say that we should return nothing as the return value is not implied in the name of the method. And I think there's a lot of value to this argument, but I've also just come to find that the convenience of having a defaulted value that I return can be quite beneficial. And this is why I return self here. The idea here is that I am returning the class instance that has the method associated to it or the game maker object that has the method associated to it. The best way to look at this is to look at a mock implementation. So let me start by creating a panel class. Now, if I wanted to set a ton of properties using our setter methods, the code would probably look something like this. Panel, set width, panel, set active, panel, set wrap, panel, set padding, panel, set margin, panel, set color. And you can see that we would have a series of setter methods sequenced one right after the other. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. This is actually very clear and very easy to read. But one of the things that we get when we do method chaining or cascading is going to allow us to simplify this code implementation. Instead of having all of it typed out in this way, what I could do is I could get rid of our semicolons here and I could start to chain these calls. and this would become a valid line of code. Now, I don't like putting everything in one line, so I would still separate it into new lines here. And what we've done is we've gotten rid of the necessity of having to type out panel every single time that we want to invoke one of these methods. And the reason we can do that is because we know that each of our setter methods will return the class instance itself. And I know that set width will return panel. So when I then immediately move to the next statement of set active, well, set active is being called on the panel. So then when I return self again of the panel, I go to panel set wrap and panel set padding and so on and so forth. So the real question here at the heart of this issue is what are you returning? returning when you don't have to return anything at all. You can choose to not return anything and maintain a more pure and clear set of method declarations, or you can start to be a little more creative with what it is that you return. Another example of this is to maybe return the method itself. This might seem like a weird one, but let's take a look at what an implementation of that might look like. Let's say that I was declaring an initialize behavior for our panel. Panel on initialize is some sort of function. So when I call panel.initialize, I want to execute something here. So in order to initialize it, I would call initialize. And here we would have our implementation. But maybe instead of doing this, what I wanted to do was be able to immediately invoke it by wrapping in another set of parentheses here at the end to invoke the method. Well, the only way I would be able to do this is if I returned the initialize method itself. So our panel on initialize might look something like this where I execute my initialize callbacks, and then I return initialize. So this would assume that we would have an initialize method up top. By choosing to return the method reference itself, it allows us to immediately invoke it without having to create another reference to the panel instance. So I'm not going to be the one to tell you what is the correct or incorrect way to handle these ambiguous methods where the return object is not entirely clear. But I hope that this does point out the decision making that should go behind choosing what it is that you do return. Do you choose to return nothing? Do you return the object itself? Or do you return something else entirely? Baking in this sort of behavior to your code 
code can be very powerful. My biggest recommendation would be to keep things consistent so you're not always confused as to what it is that's being returned. That's why in all of my methods that don't have anything that is obviously being returned, I just choose to default it to returning self. That way I always know what to expect. That's it for this topic. What is it that you like to return in your methods? Leave it down in the comments below and I'll let you know what I think. That being said, I will see you guys in the next video. If you're interested in learning more about this initialize and on initialize code here, I actually have a video where I went over how to implement custom events inside of constructors. Take a look at the video if you're interested in learning more on how to create your own set of custom events and define event callback chains. Also, Iceberg got a makeover recently. If you go check out the itch.io link for Iceberg, you'll see a lot of new things added here. The only features that Iceberg currently has right now are IB base, the constructor class, and IB object base, the game maker object. These are the base components that I use for inheritance in a lot of the sub components that come after it. So I wanted to get a version of Iceberg that was extremely stable and functional and also something that you guys could learn about. So that's why with Iceberg, when you download this, you also get access to documentation, unit tests, these videos that we're watching here, a public Trello board where I update the task that I am working on, and also the public GitHub repository where you can post issues and requests. So if you guys are interested in supporting the YouTube channel and supporting Iceberg in general, check out the link and consider donating. Otherwise, it's free to download and dig through.